In this lesson, we are going to put together different steps of a proof in order to prove triangles are congruent. We are going to use the letters G, E, R, V, T as a checklist of our necessary steps. So step G stands for write the givens. E is elaborate upon the givens. That's when we look for keywords or symbols that we could expand upon. R is reflexive property. That's when we look for sides or angles that are in both triangles. V is looking for intersecting lines and therefore vertical angles. And T is proving the triangles are congruent by one of the five methods of congruency. So let's take a look at a sample question. You can see we're provided with our given statements, with our prove statement, that's our end goal, and with our diagram. So for all of these, we are going to set up a two column proof. So we make two columns. The left column is our statement column. And the right column is our reason column. And off to the side here, I'm going to write G-E-R-V-T as a little checklist of the steps. Okay. So step G is writing the givens. So in line one, I'm going to copy over all of those givens. So J-K is congruent to N-M. JL is congruent to NL, and L is the midpoint of KM. So remember that when you're doing a proof, anytime you give a statement, you always need a corresponding reason to back it up. So how do we know all this information? Well, simply because it was given to us. Okay, so that is our first step, step G. When writing a proof, anytime you know things are congruent, we're going to mark them off in our diagram. So since I know that JK and NM are congruent, they should have a corresponding number of tick marks. JL and NL, the same thing. All right, step E, elaborate on the givens. Are there any keywords or symbols there that we could talk more about? And there is, there's this word midpoint. So we're looking for vocab terms basically in order to elaborate. So a midpoint is a point that splits a line segment into two congruent parts. So if I look at KM, that means that KL and ML should be congruent to one another. So I'm going to write for line two, KL is congruent to ML. And remember our reason is how do we know that information? Well, I know that because a midpoint splits a segment into two congruent parts. Basically our definition of midpoint. So that's how we use step E to elaborate. Step R is reflexive property. That's where we would look to see if the triangles share any sides or angles. They do not in this case. So we don't necessarily have to do all five steps. We're just gonna consider all five. V is vertical angles. Are there intersecting lines and vertical angles? There are not. So I'm at step T. T is proving the triangles are congruent to one another. If you notice our proof statement over here, the proof statement wants us to show these triangles are congruent. So that's going to be our last line here. Triangle JKL is congruent to triangle NML. So the givens are basically the start to your proof. The prove is the end of your proof. And we have to decide how do we know these are congruent. The way we decide is we look at our picture, we look at what we've been marking off, and we pick one of our five methods of congruency. So those methods to recap are side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 side, and hypotenuse leg. In this example, all three sides are marked off in each triangle. So these triangles are congruent by side, side, side. So I'm going to abbreviate that with SSS is congruent to SSS. We could call it side, side, side congruence. We have options of how we could write that. But basically, we have now proven the triangles are congruent. So step T is complete. And we did that through side, side, side. Okay, let's look at example two. We are given that KM and JN bisect each other, and we're asked to prove the two triangles are congruent. 
So I have already gone ahead, set up my statement reason columns, copied the givens in, and I wrote my GERVT checklist and checked off step G. So E, we're going to elaborate on the given. So that means explain any keywords or vocab we see in the given. And this time I see the word bisect. So K, M, and J, N bisecting each other means that they split each other into two congruent parts. So K, L, and M, L must be congruent. And J, L, and N, L are going to be congruent as well. Since these two have the same reason, so JL is congruent to NL and KL is congruent to ML. Since they have the same reason, I'm going to merge them together into one statement. You could separate them if you wanted, uh, but I'm going to write the reason once. So a bisector splits a segment into two congruent parts. Remember with um, bisectors that they can bisect segments or angles. So always pay attention to that so that you put the appropriate word here. So we do have segment bisectors here. So a bisector splits a segment into two congruent parts. All right, on my checklist, that takes care of step E. Reflexive property does not apply here. The two triangles do not share any sides or angles but I do have vertical angles. If the two line segments bisect each other, they intersect, and that means we have vertical angles. So those two vertical angles are within the middle here with the vertex L. So first I'm gonna identify the vertical angle. So angle JLK and angle NLM are vertical angles. Remember, our reason is going to explain how do we know that, and that's because intersecting lines form vertical angles. But remember, the goal is always to get these pieces to be congruent, so I'm going to add an additional line here that explains that those two angles are congruent, and my reason would be that vertical angles are congruent. And that takes care of step V. So one step left, that's to prove the triangles, T for triangles, are congruent. If we look at our proof statement, that's what our ultimate goal is. So we are at the end of our proof. Triangle JKL is congruent to triangle NML. And we're going to pick one of our five methods. In this case, and when we look at the picture, there are two sides marked off in a triangle with the angle between them, and that indicates side, angle, side. That concludes step T and finishes off proof number two. All right, moving on to number three. Again, I've gone ahead and wrote uh, my givens in and checked off step G. So we're given that H, T, and A, M are parallel to one another and that H and A are congruent. So since I know H and A are congruent from the givens, I'm going to go ahead and mark those off to just begin. All right, H, T, and A, M are parallel. Whenever I have parallel in the givens, I like to highlight them in my picture. And I look to see, can I turn this into a Z shape? So if I connect T and M together, I can form this kind of backward Z shape. And the angles in the corner of the Z, those are our alternate interior angles. So that's what we're looking for. So I'm going to identify those and say angle HTM and angle AMT are alternate interior angles. We have to always explain how do we know that. Well, I know that in this case because parallel lines cut by a transversal form alternate interior angles. 
Just like the previous example, when we identified that they were vertical angles, and then in the next line we said they were congruent, we're gonna be doing that same thing here. So I'm gonna now say those two angles are congruent to one another. And that's because alternate interior angles are congruent. When we look at our picture at this point, each of the two triangles has two markings. The goal is always to get three. So I know step E is done. We've elaborated on our givens, but R, we're going to look for the reflexive property. And I do see an application of, here, of it here that would help. If I say that TM is congruent to itself, I am able to simultaneously mark off something in both triangles and that will give us our third marking. So I'm going to say TM is congruent to TM by the reflexive property. And check off step R. I don't have any vertical angles in this picture. I don't have intersecting lines. So I'm just going to put an X next to step V. And finally, step T, proving the triangles are congruent. That's our proof statement anyway, so we know we're at the end. And when we look at our picture here, we have two angles marked off and a side that is not between them. So that is angle, angle, side. And that will check off step T. For the remaining practice problems, I have already gone ahead and written out the solutions, so we're just going to talk through them. So number four, the given tells us that KM and JL are perpendicular, and it also tells us that JK is congruent to LK. So the first thing I did since the given told us that we have two congruent segments, I went ahead and marked those off in the diagram. And I wrote the givens in my proof, completing step G. Step E is elaborate on those given, so I'm going to expand upon the perpendicular symbol. That, for, uh, that indicates that we have right angles, so in lines 2 and 3, I identified what the right angles are, and then I also said that they were congruent. And that concludes step E. After that, KM is congruent to KM by the reflexive property. So when I looked at my picture after that point, I noticed that I had hypotenuse leg here. So hypotenuse leg is unique compared to the others because it only works in right triangles because only right triangles have a hypotenuse. So in our proof, what I did to take that into account was I added in this line five here that says that triangle JKM and triangle LKM are right triangles because right triangles have a right angle. I wanna be very clear that I understand that it's a right triangle before I apply the hypotenuse leg theorem in the next line. So once I did that, then I was able to say the two triangles were congruent by HL. Um, I did put a note off to the side here too of another route you could have taken. So sometimes proofs do not just have one set path to proving the triangles congruent and there are options. So I put a note here that you could have also included that angle J and L were congruent by the isosceles triangle theorem. That would have given you another option that could have given you that the triangles were congruent by angle angle side instead. Um, so that would have been another valid option for proving the two triangles are congruent. All right, in number five, I had two givens that were very similar to one another. They were both angle bisectors. So after writing the givens, I elaborated upon the bisect twice. So I said angle CDB and ADB are congruent and angle CBD and ABD are congruent because a bisector splits an angle into two congruent parts. Again, always pay attention to when you're writing about a bisector, um, you want to be clear that it's bisecting an angle in this problem, whereas in one of the previous problems, it was bisecting a segment. There are two types of bisectors, so we want to be clear which one we're working with. I had the reflexive property in this problem as well. BD is congruent to BD by the reflexive property, and the two triangles are congruent by angle side angle. I can tell that because when I look at the picture, each triangle has two angles marked off as well as the side right between those two angles that's also marked off.
in number six. The given tells us that we have a perpendicular bisector. So I treated these as really almost two separate givens. I treated it first as if we had perpendicular lines and I talked about in lines two and three of my proof all about the right angles. And then I talked about the bisector. So I said that AD is congruent to DC or CD uh, because the bisector splits a segment into two congruent parts. Okay, so again, if you see perpendicular bisector, you can treat the two parts individually that you have perpendicular and that you have bisector. Then I use the reflexive property. There are no vertical angles in this picture and the triangles are congruent by side, angle, side. All right, and for our last example, a very short one, I wrote the givens and this is the first time we've seen it where there's nothing to elaborate upon in those givens. You cannot expand upon it at all or talk more about the vocabulary terms, so you simply just mark them off. Then I moved on to R, the reflexive property, and the two triangles were congruent by side, side, side. Okay. Hopefully this video helps you better understand how to prove triangles are congruent.